everybody. Welcome to Tadaima Terrace House Podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I'm Robert Scarponito, and I'm joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Konbanwa. Jack Cepeda. Hiroshimasu. And Colin Sparling. Hello, everybody. And today we're going to talk about episode 8 of Tokyo 2019-2020. Passive boys. Passive. A bunch of passive boys. boys. Boys, you know, you're passive. You know, I just, I just don't care that much. I don't know. I'm just a guy here. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Do you guys still want to do this podcast? I mean, I'm okay either way. Do you guys either way, boys. You know, I mean, I want to stop being so passive. I want to do it. No, again. I mean, okay, if you want to do it, do you want to do yeah, it? Daily, do well, you mind leading this? Yeah, I don't know just, if I want to lead this podcast. I'm just a guy here. We're just, just passing along the time. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop this. <laughs> I feel like the joke okay, stopped being funny a minute ago. All girl electronic indie band called them the Passive Boys. There you go. There it is. Someone TM TM mail that to your TM 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 TM. TM. <laughs> uh, That's yeah, not how th- it works, guys. <laughs> <laughs> TM. Um, but no, this episode. Yeah, we get to we get to see. This is maybe uh, an episode that reminds me a lot of just kind of like it makes me think of, of sitcoms like Friends or like a lot of sitcoms in the '90s where it was very mm-hmm. like a boys versus girls subtle mentality. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. this episode evoked a lot of that for me. 100 um, percent oh yeah uh so we opened this episode with the panel of course and tokui says that kaori's a bit in a grip between haruka and risiko <laughs> much like a crab claw the crab claw is coming seeing out that like come to him like that idea and he was like oh it's like crab claw <laughs> just anywhere i can claw. squeeze a crab reference into the show i'm gonna do it and yama's not having any of it no he's so <laughs> sick of it i wonder if they're crab core fans Yep. Yep. No. Um, but we get into the episode itself. We open up in Shibamata in Tokyo with Kaori and Shohei. They're doing their little deto, right? Um, they're at the station. They're seeing all these statues. Which fun fact: those statues are of um, like Torojiro Kuruma, who's like a famous character, like a movie character from back in the day. That's mm-hmm. from that area, and he's kind of like an icon in the area, which is why there are statues there. Fun fact. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, nice. That is fun. This is giving yeah. me some well, Shion and Tsubasa vibes. This date, I kind of yeah. I liked how uh, it was a nice day. I remember the sun was shining, and I remember when Kaori's like, "Do you know who this person is?" That statue, and she's like, "No." And then she goes, "Oh, it's a uh, Sakura." He goes, "How do you know?" He's like, "It's written right there." It's 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 written. <laughs> I just read the sign. <laughs> hey, Shohei's a writer, not a reader. Reader is not Guess. one of his many talents. Uh, yeah, he's not a photographer either, which we find out later. <laughs> God, I, you know, I went to school for journalism. To me, it's wild that his idea of I need to write this article about this place where there are things to do and things to see. Not <laughs> once does he think maybe I should photograph. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys have phones, right? Diablo? Yeah. 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 You have phones? Oh, my you guys God. have phones. <laughs> it, it's such a pity because it is such a picturesque place. Like, mm. it's yeah. beautiful. They're, they're sitting on that, like, porch area. They have, like, the little puppy incense burner like usually mm. those incense burners that you sit out in the summer like on porches in japan they're like shaped like a pig like that's just kind of like the traditional like hackneyed version but like this one is like a cute puppy with a bow and like mm. beautiful eyes and then they eat like all this cute stuff and yeah. he doesn't take a picture of any of it which is a problem that i also have when i'm like oh this is beautiful and then i eat half of it and then i'm like oh I should have taken a picture. Fuck, should have got that gram. <laughs> my Instagram. Yeah, exactly. That gram. Yeah. That scene was very picturesque, where they were sitting oh, on yeah. uh, the wood, the hardwood floor in front of the the Japanese garden. It was yeah. beautiful. Uh, and then I believe Kaori goes on on a tangent about how her grandma had a very similar garden, with maybe even a waterfall. And I'm like, yeah, a but then she a stream, a trickle. Yeah, it was, it was a trickle like a of trickle. a stream. I'm like, damn, but it's gone now. It's gone now. Damn, kind of hitting at yeah. kind of hitting at the 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 well off side of Kaori's family, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, there, there's something I do want to point out here, and um, this is something I've noticed Kaori do multiple times in this episode, and just the way she interacts with people. So you know, Shohei is like, "Oh man, I just forgot. I didn't take any pictures. I'm a fucking noodlehead." And then he asks uh, Kaori, "Do you mind drawing for the articles? Because my the editor, I can talk to the editor. We could pay you well." Right. And her response is along the lines of, I've been meaning to draw Ginza anyway, so it works out. As in, like, I don't 
you're don't worry you're not troubling me this is something i wanted to do anyway mm. you're just giving me more reason to do it and thanks for the money yes and thanks for the money but, yeah. i don't know if can they afford her like and he was just like oh you could you could draw something we'll pay you and it's like Mm, she's working for the big magazine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She yeah. works for a pretty big time y'all. fashion magazine, right? So yeah. I don't think that's just She'll like, get... it's not any, you know, there's no $50 com- cheap commissions happening here or something. Maybe, oh, no, maybe no, she'll no, give no, him yeah, the roommate no. rate though, you know, but she's mm. like, oh, we did. That's when she points out, we didn't take any pictures. And you know who would have taken a picture, Shohei? Not to hate on you too hard, but like a professional writer <laughs> that does this full time, like Robert said, would have probably taken some pictures as he's out and about. But you're just so spread thin on so many different things. Like he's just easily distracted and I guess just unfocused, it seemed like. And that does segue well into the next scene where they're at Chawari, right, in Meguro, where they're at that bar that Kaori had suggested on their first date. Like, hey, if you like green tea highball, you'll like Chawari. Let's go there. Yeah. And they're having beer. Shohei's feeling good about his article, even though he didn't take any pictures for it. And this is when Kaori brings up the tempura incident, which I've noticed keeps rippling back around now because it was last mm-hmm. week, I think, when Haruka, apo- or no, two weeks ago, Haruka apologized to him about it, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's rippling back now. And <laughs> when she asks him, she's a little wishy-washy, but he's like, just say it to me straight. And when she does, he la- he does his little weird fucking ah, stoner who, laugh. Who wants ah. to do it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just um yeah i really noticed it there that's yeah. when i was like oh that's sound bite worthy here we go mm-hmm. and um she is genuinely you know like curious like is this like it's just so hard for the house to like accept maybe that that's really how he feels they're just like oh he just want he just figuring out what he likes and then he's gonna pick one like no not really that's mm-hmm. just not who he is it's not seeming that way and, so far. and his goal is you know he, what is he 25 his goal 26. is to work and have a family, which is an important key here, but then have enough money to pay his bills so the family doesn't suffer, but then also just have a drink at night. Yeah. And that's, you know, d- doable, but it's risky, right? It's just such a risky way of living when you're just doing so many things all the time and there's no stable income. I mean, you can't right. help but feel for anyone that is trying to consider long term prospects with somebody, but when they're on such unstable foundation it's gonna make it hard you know and that that's why yeah. you see it all over Cowrie's face too man her expression when she's like is that really how you feel mm-hmm. oh it was painful yeah and i feel like in that in that sense too he's contradicting himself right because if his plan is to ultimately have like stable income now you know we're being able to pay his bills being able to pay for stuff involving his family and then also being able to have a drink whenever he wants that implies he wants a stable income. So being wishy-washy and having pursuing 5 million different careers all at once is not going to provide that. Yeah. I think he's, he's skipping the step that's it's like in order to get to where you're looking to get, which is getting into a stable place that like you can start a family and just chill out at your favorite local bar in the evenings. He's skipping the part that it's like you need to get, your shit figured out essentially Mm -hmm. and for someone so career-minded as kauri yes it's like any kind of like feelings that might have been there because i thought they got along really well on their date like they looked like they had a lot of fun but any kind of like future plans like could this work out between them in the future like was dashed instantly because yeah that just does not jive with where she's at yeah total total red light in that conversation yeah yeah, I agree. I mean, that's kind of my takeaway from it. But as you point out as well, too, it is fairly uh, it's not it's not out of their own possibility that, you know, well to do women find themselves with unremarkable men, you know, mm-hmm. so like so he's kind of made it plain like, hey, this is who I am. I'm not going to change Da 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 da. kind of laid his cards out there. So now Cowrie's like, well, if this is going to be like a thing where we date and we're in a relationship, I just have to be the breadwinner. I mean, that. Yeah, that is a possibility. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad thing either. I think that might be a, a harder pill to swallow in Japan because I think Japan is a little bit more masculine centered than America Definitely. tends to be. Definitely. Yeah. But that would I would be there. I'd be here for a great relationship like that where Shohei, you know, takes on more like house duties, but also that gives him the perfect time to write his article here and there and then practice his acting over here and all that, you know, like I feel like that, that would actually fit who he wants to be very well. So and ideally, oh sorry, good. 
Yeah, I just I don't want to slag the man. I think it I, I kind of admire him for wanting to pursue the life he wants in the face of so much adversity because pretty much everyone in the house is kind of like I don't know, man. Yeah, you know? I well, okay, so here's mm-hmm. the thing though. So ideally, yes, like everyone can be happy, everyone can do what they want. I get it. But the look on Kyrie's face that ain't gonna. That is not what she's looking for, and that's not gonna make her happy. It's very concerning to her, and so it doesn't look like it's a good fit for them as a couple. Right. Those right. two specifically. Yeah, I. Yeah. You know, I wonder what Shohei's calendar looks like. If you were to look at it, it put a schedule on a Google. <laughs> you think calendar, this man has a calendar? I. I doubt it. <laughs> but if you were to just like plot it all out on a calendar, I'm like, dude. It sounds like you just part of it's probably he just needs to get organized on top of all that. But assuming he's not, you know, I would hate to see him sitting there and trying to plan out all this stuff he does, making time for this, this, that, this, this and that I be living the way that he does. I can't help but feel like I would get burnt out in this situation. I, I don't see a problem with mm. him uh, like how he is like, that's fine. He's 25. No, I don't inherently to, see a problem with it. Yeah. And I'm not saying you do, but to to um, Daly's point here, the incongruency here is that he's saying he wants a family. Right. You know, if he was just like, hey, I'm here to have fun. I'm here to do whatever. I'm, I can go to Taiwan whenever I want to. Fine. Do your thing. But if you want to, again, have some sort of stability here, then your the your income cannot be a source of kind of chaos in your life. In order to have that stability, it, right? Yeah, exactly. And and honestly, as someone who I like, I'm stretching myself pretty thin. I'm I have my hands in a lot of different pots, out of kind of necessity right now. But for me, I'm like looking forward to the day when I can just have one thing I can, or one or two things that I can put all of my energy into instead of five or six. Yeah, so, what's the thing? Like, uh, don't don't half ass anything, whole ass one. Thing. Exactly. <laughs> Only thanks, Nick Offerman. <laughs> yeah. Ron Swanson. Ron Swanson. DM. Yeah. Whole no, ass I, one thing. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think we're going to have to see where this goes because Cody, I don't think she writes off Shohei completely. She, I think she still like, cause she still wants to know, right? I guess we can go to the next scene here after the Shintro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're in Shinsen, Tokyo, where all the girls are together. Uh, they're remarking like, hey, it's getting summery. Let's go to the pool. Let's, you know, get floaties for the pool. And they sit down at this French French restaurant called Seven Clover. Um, and the first thing they talk about is Risiko asks, Hey, when you two are together upstairs, do you talk about the guys? And this is where this whole conversation happens where Kaudi and Risiko or Kaudi and Haruka say, Hey, you should join us. We don't want to exclude you. Right. But at the same time, Haruka and Risiko definitely disagree on their approach to sharing information about the people they're interested in. This was well placed and paced in this episode because this is a theme that comes back later and we will get there don't worry but this is just basically showing you know Haruka and Risako are different they handle things differently they have different comfort levels especially when it comes to romance and so Haruka kind of admitted that she's like well XYZ, this is why I have been avoiding you. This is why I don't feel comfortable talking to you, right? They kind of laid it out there to bear and it was cool to see them all talk um, right. I thought maybe they would have patched some things up, but it just seems like they kind of stirred the pot a little bit here. Yeah. yeah, they did. They did the the part of the discussion where they, you know, they they laid it out there and, and how they feel and stuff like that. But no rift was really crossed. You know what I mean? Nothing was really patched mm-hmm. up. So it was kind of just yeah. left open. And if anything, like the wound was getting bigger after that. It. It did feel good, though, that like all the girls were able to sit down and talk for once. Right. Because yeah. it has very much been that season of like uh, Risiko hanging out with the guys mm-hmm. and it feeling like very isolated. So I, I, I think it helped like the overall vibe for the girls side of the house with like, hey, we don't mean to exclude you. And like, oh, I'm glad that we all got to talk together mm-hmm. versus something boiling over later like it did in opening new doors with maya yeah agreed yep i this is this is a part of the episode where i started to notice maybe risiko is just a little bit evil like she's okay with doing a little bit evil to get the good right (sighs) evil is a strong word robert i'm just saying man she has a mean streak that comes through i think she well, she doesn't really know when to let up sometimes she's like when she finds a point she'll poke at it you know she'll pour a little salt 
in the wound a little bit. Right, Seems right. Like. But yeah. this is this is the first time I think we've actually seen a little bit of uh upfront aggression, I would say, from Rusako. Yeah, because she says, and this is the the point that made me think she's a little evil, or at least a little bit of a liar, in that she says she doesn't want to come off like she's bragging about the guy she's interested in, right? Like that's not her approach. Her approach is just that she wants everyone to know all the information since everyone knows it's happening anyway. Like let's just make it open instead of pretending we're keeping secrets. And that's and not think, how Terra's house works. No, <laughs> well, from yeah, what I but, know about Terra's house. So I think it's noble, right, to say I don't want this to be like a thing where I win. It's just like, here's the information. But on the other yeah. hand, when you think a drunk man profusely right in front of the other girl who's chasing after him, like you thank him five times, you deep bow in the seat you're sitting on, like that can't help but come off as like, fuck you, Haruka. Look at what I did. Look at like, him paying for my meal. Yeah. Dangling a little bit. Kind of dangling. Yeah. She definitely says one thing, but then in her head, I she definitely at least based on her actions, she definitely sees it as a competition. It almost seems like it's less and less about Kenny and more and more about winning. It yeah. definitely is starting to feel that way, especially since Kenny isn't really explicitly interested in either of them. <laughs> I wonder I wonder if it's that way or just to play kind of like uh, the Risiko's advocate here. Um, like if she's really just truly kind of smitten with him and just can't help but because mm. she can't help but talk about things as we've right. I think learned over this season like she'll just go ahead and say it so maybe she's been like really restraining herself in terms of talking about like oh I think I really like Kenny or like oh it was really cool that we did this on the date etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah and so one and thing she doesn't want to restrain herself anymore Sorry, Dylan. So one thing about Risiko, since we were talking about kind of her personality here, is I went back to episode one and kind of listened to her first monologue, like describing who she is as a person. And she said mm. that she can be sometimes too intense in a relationship, too into it, and find it overbearing and drive people away, where then other times she can be like too withdrawn and not care at all. And so it's kind of interesting mm. to see like there's two sides of her here and i don't know i just thought it was interesting because i just wanted to see if i could get any more clues or any in insight into what might be going on in her mind here it just seems mm -hmm. like it's just kind of devolved into some kind of petty competition right and I, yeah and we just don't see enough of her and kenny bonding really because like the last thing we saw was them on the ta rooftop terrace right and that's when kenny told her Right or am I wrong? That was the last time they were alone, and then um, so. he was saying, "Oh, I can see uh, Haruka now as a romantic interest." So it's like I don't know, I don't know, you know, how close they actually are. Yeah, right yeah. Now. Seeing so, Kenny's oh, stance on uh, the issue is, is really what I need to see because uh, I think with the whole incident that happened when it was Risako, uh, Haruka, and Kenny sitting at the the, the kitchen table, uh, you know, when when. Haruka took it on herself or Risako took it on herself to basically tell Kenny that Haruka likes him. Then I, I, obviously that whole thing's happened to him. And I think in that situation that was pushing Kenny away really hard. I mean, he was just like, I got to get out of here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He was looking for an excuse to kind of leave the room. He's like, this is uncomfortable, mm. you know? So I want to circle back to, uh, Cody and Shohei here, right? Because Risiko turns the question now to Cody, who's mainly been the instigator of the questions right now, right? Yeah. Risiko asks Cody, but what about Shohei? How do you feel about him? And she relays the whole family over career thing. But at the same time, she can't shake the feeling that she just wants to know the truth. Like, does he still like her? You know, and I think mm. if it's something that bothers you enough where it's like, it's something you just quote unquote, at least want to know, there, there's at least some sort of investment she has in him. She I wants mean, to know that the truth. was like a really powerful thing that he did you know episode one day one mm. i'm strongly drawn to you like i wouldn't be able to resist like my heart being like doki doki a little bit if someone mm. just like straight up like looked you in the eye and said something like that mm. yeah it takes balls to do that and yeah he was uh yeah he was taking the initiative there he wasn't being a passive boy passive boy time. but now, now they're all being passive boys because Risiko brings up this. She asks it in a very teacher-like way where she basically says, raise your hand if you think the boys haven't been assertive enough. And they all do. And, yeah, thanks, Jack. Thanks for holding up your hand there. 
Um, but yeah, they, they all agree and they say something that I just didn't notice until now, but they say Kenny hasn't asked anyone out on a date because he hasn't. And is, oh, is that true? Ever. Yeah, that's true. He just he just sits there. He's in analysis paralysis, as we mm. call it. He's an overthinker. I mean, and this is totally something we've been talking about ever since we first heard from him from his first intro interview. He doesn't want a girl to even know that he's a singer. <laughs> Because they're just going to mm. fall instantly in love. It's like, dude, you're overthinking it now. Yeah. Like you have literally you you can't take any initiative because you're too worried about what might happen. I don't. And the thing about Kenny is when he said to I hope I'm not jumping too far ahead. But when he said, uh, I don't want to ask anyone out because I don't want to lead them on. Is he just saying he doesn't like anybody? <laughs> I don't want I them think to think so. I like them. Like that's, what is that's the sense I, I get. Yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah. yeah. Because the whole point of asking someone out is to get to know them, right? Gosh. Like, not necessarily... Like, if you you like them, you would say, hey, let's go on a date because... All right, let's let's see if this can lead to I something romantic. Made better, yeah, yeah. I was just say like this whole thing has been like kind of confusing to me in the sense that it's like they're like, oh, you guys are too passive. You don't ask anyone out on dates. It's like that very heavily puts the assumption on that the Terrace House formula is about like dating versus like maybe dating. Like they, it seems like they're coming from the perspective that like they should all be. Coupling up. Possibly, yeah, coupling up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I see exactly what you mean, Daly, because it, now it's it's that kind of an expectation. It, it's implying that they walked in with an expectation to date someone. Yeah. 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 So this this carries into the next scene, right? We're in the first floor. It's Shohei, Risiko, and Ruka. And look, Risiko just is straight up like, hey, the girls and I have been talking. You boys fucking suck. Uh, Get, stop but, being so passive. But before she does that, though, key here, oh, she goes, "Right, this doesn't have to do with you, Ruka. <laughs> Just <Yeah. laughs> like well, you're, you're excused out of the from this conversation. <laughs> By the way, you men, we need more initiative for you, but we don't expect much from the boy here." The we little get boy. That. We get that, Ruka. And it was just like, dude, he his... just kind of sat there and like hugged his knees and rocked back and forth. I felt <laughs> bad for him, man. Like his face, like he looked like I was like, is he going to cry? Like, it not was... that there would be anything wrong with that, but I was just like, are you OK? It was emasculating. He hated that. Well, yeah, I yeah. mean, that. I think, you know, even with 19 year old me in that situation, I think I would be pretty upset with that, too. You know, mm-hmm. if I was like trying to be a. A, a, pro- a dating prospect in the house and someone tells me yeah you're not even in the dating conversation he, he rook is definitely there to date he's definitely yeah, there 100 he oh, yeah he is yeah and to hear like oh well we don't consider you the same way we consider the the expectations for you are lower the bar is lower for you you know that's oh that's rough it is the musical even risico given throws age. risico throws another attack at him too because not only does she say hey you're not in this conversation don't worry about it boy but also, Boy. you're too shy, even though I don't believe you're too shy. But whatever. It's like she's just fucking throwing him under two okay. buses. So, yeah, this is kind of another tangent here, too. So after our last uh, uh, takedown of Ruka, I guess, you know, in the comments and on social media, like the RDF has come to the fore, the Ruka Defense Force. So a lot of people <laughs> think we're being <laughs> a lot of people think we're being too rough on him. Yeah, that's true. I kind of get that because we are kind we are kind of dogpiling on him. But the RDF is out here now defending this man. But keep in mind, guys, you might know more stuff that we don't know. We're only taking this on an episode by episode basis, and I'm willing to come back around on him. But it's just the thing that Risiko says, right? Can we all agree that she knows him the best of all three of the girls? Oh yeah. Her her statement here saying he's not. Uh, being sincere. That's the problem I've always had with him. Like from day one, I was like, I don't think this guy's being for real. I don't think he's being upfront about who he is and what he, what he's like dating. I just think he's kind of playing a shy character here. And so that's, yeah. the, that's the issue. I'm the underlying issue I have with the guys. I just don't know how sincere he's being, but we'll find out, you know, I am willing to like, like him eventually. It's just right now. I just don't know if he's true to himself. Yeah. That's the thing is like, the thing we've talked about a, a few times before is I just don't feel like I know Ruka. You know what I mean? I As long as we've watched the show so far, I don't really feel like I've gotten to know exactly who he is. You yeah. know, because he, he talks about... Wishy-washy. Yeah, and he talks about, like, shared interests with Haruka and stuff like that. Like, hey, I like Harleys. It's like, okay, that's cool, right? But, like, what, what what's your ambition? What's your passion? What's, uh you know... What's something that you deeply care about? Like, there's no deep conversations really coming from Ruka. 
So and that that's what Risa is echoing too, right? She can't have those deep conversations with him. He's too young. He's too mature. She, I mean, she's dunking on him now, right? Like, oh, this doesn't include you, even though I don't really believe the things you say. Like, damn, right? He's damn not trying bro. to build a yeah. connection. Like, it seems like in the first comment, like this doesn't include you. At the at first, I thought she was just trying to like spare his feelings and be like, oh, I totally understand. Like. <laughs> you're really embarrassed like you can't really control that but then it was just like yeah you're faking it like (laughs) yeah dude brutal yeah it just it tears it to the bone you're just a child you are not in this adult conversation even though i'm only one year older than you i mean maybe he just doesn't have enough experience to know how to connect with someone like a, a dating prospect i don't know I don't know. Well, we'll have to see as 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 the as it develops, right? But anyway, Risa goes very up forward uh, up front you guys men only the men in the house please oh. be more assertive Yikes. and also could you tell kenny that for me because i don't want to tell kenny that thanks <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, i really i really like, like you could tell kenny to you like, yeah it's like come on you can't just do that like that's just mean and, and the and thing she points out relay too, this to kenny yeah the thing she points out too is like it's almost like should we even say it because we want you guys if you're gonna ask out you want you to do it because you want to not because we asked you to just now Mm-hmm. Right. right you know so that's like the quandary then that kind of illustrates how bad it is that these girls feel like they have to speak up like how does doubting do we have any allure why are these guys so passive like what's yeah. what's going on here yeah there's there's a really a lot that happens in this scene i, I just don't want to get too into the weeds but there's so much to, like to dissect but so haruka comes in later right and with the moment she steps in you know how to like risiko says that kaori is unsure of where Shohei stands with her, right? That Kaori is maybe suspecting that Shohei doesn't like her anymore, which we as the viewers know, yes, that's true. Shohei doesn't have romantic interest in Kaori anymore, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And I just, I wanted to highlight this scene because this is happening in front of Ruka. It's like in front of Ruka right now, he's getting all this intel, like calculations are being made in his head. Like, <laughs> oh no, they might think, she thinks that Shohei doesn't like her too. This is my perfect time. Swoop in. Art supplies. Mm. Art supplies. Uh. <laughs> art supplies. Which he can't remember the word for art supplies. Yeah. No. He says tools, right? Like the, uh, the word tools, for tools, I think. Yeah. Crawling on the floor uh, to knock on the door. Yeah. Is that where we're at now? Yeah, well, almost. Um, one more thing in that Haruka also says, like she she also agrees with Risiko, yes, you boys are too passive, right? And this is where it a little bit falls apart for me. Like it, it makes me wonder what happens off camera that we're not seeing because right after she agrees, yes, Shohei step up, stop being passive. Shohei then asks, oh, but Haruka, we're still going out on the first, right? And she's like, hmm. wait, are we? Oh, yeah. And he's it's like, like <laughs> yeah, I told you I'm free. And she's like, did you? I might have forgotten because I was yeah. tipsy. Yeah, you can't get mad that people are asking you out and then forget when they do. And then on top of that, then she's like, "What was the event again?" I'm sorry. What? what? <laughs> like, I, like this was just off she's the too, radar completely. She's too fucking yeah. focused on yeah, Kenny. Yep. Yeah, and yep. Yeah. I don't know. And and the, the thing is, the event was also Kenny's live show. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you know, my so it's, it's just, there's so many layers here of like, yeah. okay, maybe the guys aren't asking you out enough, but also maybe you're just forgetting all the times the guys ask you out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're just really complaining about Kenny. Because yeah. he's never asked yeah, anyone out there ever. There we go. Yeah. It's, it's just about yeah, Kenny. This is, yeah. yeah, this is direct. It really Kenny. is at this phase. It really is all about Kenny. Yeah, so this next bit here, after Shohei leaves for the bathroom, this has me a little bit, like, iffy about it. This is where Ruka, like, he's shook to his core. Maybe it's the whole he's treated like a child. Maybe it's the mm-hmm. whole even Risiko doesn't believe his shtick. Or maybe it's the fact that he feels passive himself. But he's, quote, disgusted with himself. And he says, I feel gross because I'm too feminine. Uh, uh, which is That's just, a great thing to say to a woman, I'm just going to say. Like, yeah. especially like one that like values femininity. It's like, I feel disgusting because of femininity. And it's like, cool, yeah. Yeah. I'm right here, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he doubles down on it too. He says, I'm turning into the type of person I hate. And it's like, oh. Yeah, I like, dude. I mean, <sighs> like, I, I guess I, it just doesn't make sense to me in this scene, especially because right now in the house, the, per- the people who are quote unquote the most feminine are the ones being assertive. 
You know, mm. so it's mm-hmm. like, what does yeah. femininity have to do with anything about why you yeah. feel gross about yourself right now? Yeah, Shohei says something along the lines like, "Why would they're all beautiful? All three of these women are beautiful. Like, why would they ever want to go out with us?" Or some to something to that effect, didn't he? Yeah, like that's yeah, that yeah. might be his reasoning why he's not showing that much initiative. Kenny's reasoning is because he doesn't want anyone to think he likes them. I guess what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, it's and then Ruka's just too no, fucking it- shy. That pretty much sums it up. I'm, we might we might be disagreeing on something here, Jack, because, and and we'll get to it. But I think Kenny's right to be doing what he's doing. Ooh, I'm not saying oh. he isn't right. Question mark. Oh, okay. Let's yeah. let's fast forward through the next bit then, because the next bit's the panel, and Yama. I think just I I feel like if our show had a spirit animal, it would be Yama, because I feel like a lot of our <laughs> yes. our general opinions align with him, in that. He's also skeptical about Ruka because at first he wanted to buy a bike because he liked Haruka the gearhead, and now right. he wants to buy a sketchbook because he likes Kaudi the the artist, artist head. He just he just needs an excuse to artist. talk to them. Eraser head. <laughs> Eraser head. <laughs> he can't just say, "Hey, you want to go and you know to dinner and a movie sometime? I want to get to know you better." He can't say it has to be a reason. There has to be some underlying motive here. Oh, I want to draw. You know. Oh, I want a Harley. Mm. No, dude, it's you perfectly know. okay to go out with someone just because you have an interest in them. Oh, let's yeah. go skateboard. <laughs> you know, so I yeah. know it's a foreign. Like you concept, can have different but... interests. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like you can function that way. Yeah. So now we're in the boys' room, and Kenny gets home from a show or at the beach, and he's he's talking about like, oh guys, I'm so tan. Look at me. And then show his like, <laughs> Kenny son. There's some real shit going on right now. You need to stop talking about your suntan. <laughs> I think he was half, half I like joking. He shut him down. <laughs> yeah. He like shut him down. And it's like there are more important matters to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. We are in nope. dire straits, friend. And yes. he relays the whole oh. passivity thing. And this is what Jack was touching on where Kenny re- says he doesn't want to be misinterpreted. <gasps> whereas Shohei says, but they're all too beautiful anyway to misconstrue our advances as anything. And then Ruka is... I mean, he oh, doesn't say too much about the girls, but he does complain that he thinks the girls don't see him as a mature boy, and he wants the girls to see him like they see Kenny. Yeah, be treated yeah. as equals. I mean, I mean, he knows that now. They pretty much said it right to his face. We don't consider yes. you like these other two guys. Yeah, I don't know. I, I find it funny because, like, man, to me, isn't it a sign of immaturity to demand people treat you like you're mature? If you have yeah. to say it, have, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you're not it. mature. You. Exactly. That's definitely proof yeah. through action sort of thing. It, it, that goes with a lot of things. If you have to spend all day convincing people how smart you are, guess what? You're not that smart. And no. insecurity is quiet. Or no, wait. Insecurity is loud. And being self-assured and being secure in yourself is, is quiet. Guys. Guys. Ooh, wisdom. What if, Ruka, yes. what if Ruka evolves into a nice guy, TM? I uh, hate this. No, I don't know what that no. is. No, I don't know what that is. I don't want it. That he, it feels a lot like he, like maybe the femininity comment comes back to he's like, oh, I'm becoming like, ugh, like a beta male, like not like super alpha, like Kenny. I don't who, know these terms. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, you know, wait, you do you not know what a nice guy you don't is? Don't want to. I don't want to get into it. It doesn't sound like a good okay. rabbit hole to get into. <laughs> okay. It's not. It's not. It genuinely it's, isn't. It's not but even I, really I not. think. But yeah, I think that's where uh, his his insecurity is coming from, especially like I would kind of feel a little bit that way in the sense that both of the people that seemed interested in him and that he was interested in have suddenly flocked to Kenny. And so it's like, I want what he has. Then yeah. treat me if like this him. Is what, yeah. If this is what gets attention, you know. Mm-hmm. Right, right. But and- he. He's got to be careful, though, because he could easily come off as, like, entitled. An important, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. An important beat here on this scene is there's a revelation, right, Robert? A revelation about Ruka? Yes. Where Shohei reveals to Kenny, Ruka likes Foxco. <gasps> which Kenny does that. <laughs> Not the cough. too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's pretty good. That was a good song, re- but yeah. Kenny's reaction there is easily the best he's been in eight episodes. Because he, yeah, he had I some sort Kenny. of character. Because I, I thought I would, I thought his charisma would show more at his live show. But looking back on it, like a couple episodes back, there wasn't a lot of charisma there. 
at the live yeah. show. I don't know. Did anyone else get any? I didn't. To be fair, he it's did. Kind of dry did, guy. We did see him talk about how his passion for the band was dying. Or the type yeah, of yeah, but his passion for the show is dying. His passion for any of the girls has never been lit really kindled. hard. Yeah, yeah, kindled. And it's just like, not to dwell on this too much, but it's just like, why are you here, Kenny? Like, it seems like yeah. self promotion. So it seems like yeah. self promotion. I think because like uh, he sa- the uh, extreme he inhale. says he's here to find love. Yeah, but he's not doing anything about it. Exactly. I think. But find a wife. Yeah. To. To kind of go into Kenny's corner here, though, like he, you know, he said that, you know, the reason why he's not being, you know, aggressive versus passive in terms of asking people out is because he doesn't want to lead, you know, Risuka, Risuko or Haruka along right. and make them think that he's interested in them. Yeah. I think he's just kind of like, you know, I'm I want more people to come. I want more <laughs> girls to show up. I need yeah. to meet someone i haven't hit it off with them so yeah i don't want and i don't want to force for it either. the next batch yeah, yeah I, I don't want to yeah, force, don't it. force I, it i guess maybe i'm just like maybe he should leave rather than wait for someone else mm. to leave i mean there's there's other options out there you know he doesn't have to sit out there and, and take up the terrace house spot i i do feel like that's kind of what it's coming down to because i think what the big inhale on screen kind of signifies right is that kind of signifies that well, yeah, he was shocked, I guess, but it was kind of like a sarcastic sort of shocked, and yeah. it was in a way it was. Everyone loves Cowie, yeah. of course you love Cowie. It's funny. I didn't, I didn't read it that way, but it's funny to think of it that like, way. Like you know, it was. I feel like overall his experience in, in Terrace House in general is a very passive one. We're to the point now where he's just kind of there, and maybe he yeah. is there to promote stuff or whatever. But he's just kind of very inactive in the house in general. Just- he just does, yeah. you know, he's just kind of there to be there. You know, I don't think he's he really gonna, has much investment in terms of what's going on. He's going to wait it out. Yeah. Until a new girl yeah. shows up, apparently. I don't, I don't, I don't think that has to be like a shady thing, though. Like It's not shady. I'm not trying to say it's shady. It's just, yeah. I'm being impatient and saying, dude, if you ain't going to do it, then, uh, then get out of here so someone else will do it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Someone else and can be saying, passive. And he's saying, get these girls out of here so I can maybe like someone else. <laughs> That's the difference right yeah mm-hmm. i don't know i i think i'm okay with where he's at so far i mean because i i also liked armand you know and armand is like king of passive i think when it comes to terrorist yeah. house he kind of he sits there he gets shot down a lot and he does a lot of work outside of the house yeah but you he know? was so asking and, people and, out and trying to make stuff happen he was active. yeah kenny doesn't much yeah but yeah i, I don't know like, I, i'm he, not at the point that? where i want kenny to leave no not yet me neither Anyway. I'm not there yet either, by the way. I'm not meaning to jump the gun. Um, you know, I'm curious to see what else happens. But I mean, I also don't want to go many more episodes past this where he just sits there. Mm. That's going to be super boring. What if he so, stands there instead? Uh, and sings. If he sings karaoke gangster rap songs, then. Mm. Okay. Then I can mm-hmm. see. A, a, a <laughs> there play we go. There. Yeah. So, so can, we, go, okay. can, can we talk about possibly my favorite scene? Yes, that's what I want to get to right now. And all Terrace House ever. Because Shohei says, you know what you must do, Ruka. <laughs> make you the have guys, to represent us well. Yeah, make the guys look good. So can I just let's set up the scene. We go cut to the girls' room. Girl, man. We go to the girls' room. All the girls are there, and Hanukkah's talking about like, oh, I've got a I got a cat sit for one of my friends soon. Oh, yes. that's cool. It's, in a picture. That's cool. it's very mundane it's very like yeah. anyone could interrupt this conversation at any time and it would be okay <laughs> and then we cut right outside their door and we have ruka going up the stairs no. and in the last two steps i think he trips or just like loses the no. will to live he, he's a he child crawled. listen no i know so exactly what here. the fuck he so was much, doing dude i know face exactly down ass up ruka defense force <laughs> fucking defend this scene RDF, come at me, bro, because we are dealing with a small boy here. That's how I went up the stairs when I was four years old, when I couldn't even y'all step up the stairs. I still do that. I know. Wait, y'all, I still do that. I listen in your apartment building. You but that? He, no, here's what he was really doing. He wasn't doing it just because. Well, yeah, uh, he is a child. But beyond that, what he was doing was he didn't want anyone in the girls' room to hear him approach the door. 
Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's exactly. This is a stealth yes. move. Yeah, that's his fucking ninja. That's his ninja <laughs> moves. I'm, I'm serious. This is a mode activate. He this we crawl up the stairs very right slowly now? so no one would hear him, and then he he noticed that he pitter patters across the floor because he needs to stand in front of the door and mentally prep himself, which is why he waits so long to not to <laughs> Dude, knock on the door to rap on the door. <laughs> he fucking ninja moves up. There. I'm not shooting you. He's that's sitting hilarious. there like mentally preparing himself no to do what he's know. about I'm to here. do. He's Dude, like yeah, centering he's himself. Up. Okay, Colin, are you an RDF mole? Are you a mole in our podcast <laughs> no. right now, defending this boy? No, I'm not defending him. It's still RDF lame as fuck. Mole. What he did, but like You're a plant, like dude, like just fucking do it. Like God, I mean, the thing about this scene too. Okay, so I literally had to rewind it like three, four times. I was like, wait, did that just happen? It's Am so I imagining funny. this? I thought I was watching head. a different show for a split he, second. He baby crawled up the stairs, and so he sits at the door, puts his hand on the sill. God bless this boy. Takes some deep breaths. And the funniest part is he reaches back and he's like thinking and he starts scratching his neck. Mm. And then when it does a close up and he actually knocks on the door, you can see the red scratch marks on the back <laughs> of his neck, how hard he scratched. You can see the claw marks. I'm just like, dude, calm and down. I, You're literally going to ask her to go buy markers. <laughs> like you I, have just, I out, love, man. I love how long that shot is of just oh. him standing there like it's so excessive that it makes such a good point of like it makes me wonder how many more hours of this footage do they have oh like how long gosh. was he really standing oh, out there no. right oh, and i love how they intercut it too before he even knocks they cut back to inside the girls room and they're just talking yeah. about like Kari says, oh, I need to buy some nail clippers. Like, that's the most <laughs> mundane sentence I could think of in yeah. all of humanity. And to cut it between the sh these shots of this boy standing outside of a door. Oh, it's so good. He's scratching his neck into oblivion. <laughs> he knocks on the door. And I love how, Kauri, can I borrow you? Oh, all right, yeah. Oh, wait, should yeah. we come in? No, I want you. I want to talk to you out here in the hallway. Oh, <laughs> Goes out Lord. there and he, he says... I can't remember exactly what he said, but you know he's asking her to go buy stuff with him, and she and he's like, "I need art supplies." So like, "Oh, do you want to borrow mine?" <laughs> he just thinks he's asking to borrow her markers and pencils. Like, you no. know internally, like how hard he must have panicked right then. He can't say the like, right words. Like, oh no no no! Like, no, I meant I want to. I want to. Um, I'd like to. You know. Um, I know. Let's. Uh, we should. We See, should. Uh, let's. Let's go out and buy tools. What? Like art, art, art tools, tools. Uh, together. Supplies. Like uh, I, yes, they, uh, they uh, like cannot yeah. compute. <laughs> and the thing about it is, like I, this is a part of me why I don't like him is because I think it's easy for the people he talks to, the people he gets bashful around, to just misconstrue this as I am so special. I am doing this to this person. It's all me. He likes me so much. He's paralyzed. And I just don't think that's what it is. I just think he can't literally function mm. when he, he puts and so much. He puts so much um, uh, weight into just a normal conversation or normally hanging out. It can't just be a casual thing. He doesn't. The man doesn't know how to be casual. It's such yeah. a big deal. So I, do people think he likes them that much, and it's not really the case. I mean, that's what Risa Re found out the hard way. He just needs to be cool. I mean, as daddy o, and as as much as we're making fun of him for all this as well, like anxiety is a thing. <laughs> yes, and. It it's it's just so like the secondhand embarrassment. Like my face hurt Ooh. like watching him do this. But like watching it a second time and discussing it now, like other than having had the context of he had to, you know, like get to the point that he was able to say all that, you know, standing outside the door, he he did fine. Yeah. He did fine. Yeah, I'd give him a six and a half out of ten. To be. He he felt stupid yeah. for saying the wrong word. Yeah, I mean, at least Cody didn't see the ridiculous crawling up the stairs and crawling across the floor and not. She will. She later. will though. Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh, we we might not see it until part two. Oh, oh man. Yeah. God, that's it. gonna be so but good. I mm. can't wait. Face but, down, but, ass what? up. That's the way I like to. Yeah. Crawl up to a door, like door, door and ask someone out. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I like to borrow your markers. <laughs> so one thing I do want to say here, we've been dunking a lot on Ruka in this scene, but I want to shift the spotlight over to uh, to Cowdy because of how nice she is about all this. Like one, she does offer, hey, do you want to borrow my supplies? She's but the nicest. That's the thing that's so funny about this. She, it's not a big deal. 
Yeah, but the second thing too is the moment he is able to get the words out of his mouth that are like, "No, I, I want to, I want to go shop. Can you shop so, with so me, please?" Supplies. She, she's sh immediately like, no hesitation, like, "Oh yeah, you must. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, hundred percent." Oh, you did bring up that the way that she's always like, "Oh, this is actually convenient for me." Mm -hmm. This is another example Whoa. of her being like, "Oh, I needed to buy canvas, so this Whoa. works out." Mm -hmm. She's a people pleaser. She's yeah. a people she pleaser. Mm -hmm. That's I, not I, necessarily a great thing because she's always going to be second to uh, the whims of others. Yeah, I think them. that ties into what we were talking about last week where, you know, she would say, I don't want to tell Hadika to stop talking to me about this. So I'll just keep giving her bad advice until she stops talking. I think this all ties into just like she wants other people to like who she is and she's willing to make personal sacrifices or make personal excuses to make it seem like she isn't going out of her way for someone else. And it's just like, oh, yeah, you can lean on me for anything. You can come ask me to do anything, you know? Mm. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Those are yeah. So that's that's why I pointed out earlier in the episode with Shohei. I love Cowrie so much. She's so good. She's, she's eight years his senior. Keep that in mind. So it took some balls. He God. made the move. You know, that's a pretty big jump. Uh, I don't remember Noah and Santa's the age difference there. That was a pretty wide uh, one, too. But this is 21, a... 21, 30, 30? Was but about they nine had years. such okay. similar temperament. Yeah, they very Whereas similar. Cowrie is very much the Onesan, the the older mm -hmm. older senpai in the house. Yeah. 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 I mean Definitely. and she she I think she was a little bit more forgiving too because she hasn't really spent time with Ruka before mm. at yeah, all. Yeah, she she genuinely wants a chance. Right. Like I live with this person. Let's hang out sometime. Right. Yeah. And so he comes back to the room, they debrief with the boys and Shohei like he's a good guy. Like you know, we've we've uh, kind of given Shohei a little bit of shit in the past for like the way he works. And we've talked about all of that a lot. But nonetheless, I think one thing you can safely say about him is that he's the perfect guy to have in your corner when you need backup for anything, because he will support you a million percent. Yeah. And he says, you're like, you know, Ruka's sweating, heart beating, red faced, etc. And Shohei just says, you're good as long as she understood you on the most basic level. Mm. Does she know that mm. you're, it's a date? Did, did you speak word? Did you speak the word date? Okay, you're yes. fine. Yeah. Or you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. And I don't even know if he did say date, honestly. I think he it was just like, we're going to go by markers. Help me pick them out. Yeah. yeah. But it, it becomes clear that it's a date later. Right. Uh, and then meanwhile, in the girls' room, they're all like, he totally did that because we we said that boys are passive, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. But it yeah, was still fun. nice of him, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So yeah, I don't know. It's just funny that like I guess in this in this moment right now the guys really can't quote unquote win. Not that there's really anything to yeah. win, but they definitely do not have the social power in the house right now. Yeah. Uh, we cut to Diversity Tokyo Plaza in Odaiba. We go to the rooftop on the HLNA Sky Garden. Does anyone remember where we last saw that? Kaito designed that shit. He did. <gasps> Opening new doors. Kaito designed. A I was bit hoping of that skate to see. A, I was hoping to see a cameo. It didn't happen. Oh, but shit. fingers crossed. Yeah, that didn't even occur to me. Kaito mm -hmm. designed that shit. It would have been cool to see him, but may, I yeah. don't know. Maybe he's practicing for the Olympics. That I hear that's hard work. So hey. Who knows? And I knew um, Risako is going to be good at this. She's her parkour. I've seen her flip, and she's dexterous. 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 Is that a word. Dexterous. It was, it was a dexterous. It was a marked difference from previous skate dates where like people are like, "Help! I'm scared! I'm scared! Help! Yeah. Help! Let me hold on to you." Yeah, Whereas like Minori. she she got it pretty quick. She yeah. she was like, "Okay, yeah, I got this." She could do it. She could kip flip in a few months if she keeps practicing. Definitely. Yeah. Meanwhile, Ruka tries to do a pop shove it, and he just messes it up. On I was camera. worried he's gonna roll his ankle. Yeah, it was pretty bad. The sign there was like a umbrella there, and it was like you know, have fun. Uh, skate and eat well. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. I said to eat well. I liked it. It's a mantra to live by. Yeah, yes, um, I agree. But I agree. in this moment, Risiko also puts herself in Ruka's corner here. Like she's rooting for him. She's very much saying, "Hey, just do what you do around me, and you'll be fine." <sighs> that was kind of painful because I just remember her. How long ago it seems? She's like, "Be my boyfriend." She mm. really liked him, and now it's to kind of devolved into. I mean, it's just friendship. It's purely platonic now um it's both it goes both ways you know it's not like one of them yeah. likes one and the other so they've agreed to just be friends but in a way it's just kind of sad now to be like hey just be around them how you are around me it's cool right just play it casual and yeah. just it just it, it didn't go that way you know in some in this universe in this timeline they're not meant to be 
Yeah, but I, I think mm-hmm. she means I hope she means that to a certain point though. Because if he acts the way he is around her, he's gonna end up I don't know, I guess friend zone for the lack of a better term, again. He just needs to relax. That's yeah. the theme here. Mm-hmm. Just calm down, if, man. It, if he's too much like he was around Haruka, nope. No, and it nothing's gonna either. come he's of that. Got, nope. No, nah, like just like even if if only wanted to be friends, there's like that's just such an uncomfortable position to put someone in, right? You know, to yeah. just like let's be friends, but I can barely talk to you or look at you, and I can only say words when we talk about Harleys and only Harleys. You know, only it's, Harleys. It's a weird oh, no. situation to be in. Um, but then we cut to Shibuya at this at this bar called Salon Nubatama. I want to say where Shohei walks in and he seems to have known these bartenders for a while and or oh, they're, they're the most friendly <laughs> bartenders ever. They seem nice. <laughs> One of the oh, two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he talks to Mayumi Shinohara, the 47 year old owner of this establishment. And uh, he says, yeah, I, I applied to Terrace House pretty much right after I broke up with someone in Taiwan. So now I get the vibe he's trying, he's trying to run away from something. Yeah. Ooh. Dating one month and okay, we broke up. Oh, Terrace House. Here we go. Time and work. There's out. my ticket. He only dated someone for one month. It was one month, I think he said. Yeah. Damn. And yeah. um, yeah. But I mean, the bar was cool, and, and the girls were kind of chiding him, like, so because he was saying, "Oh, the girls, they can't. They told us that we're too passive." And the one was like, "You were really." <laughs> I can't remember the exact term she said, but she's like, "You were going full speed." Episode one. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh uh, yeah 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 yep. yeah yeah. But now he reveals. Very explicitly so that he's getting more interested in Haruka. He doesn't really Haruka, say Haruka, 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 one thing mm. interesting about that, and this is just a very short tangent here, is that they did a study that the longer you're in a relationship with someone, the less it's like a linear delineation. Blah, 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 I can't talk on how many times you use their name. So, like in the beginning oh. of a relationship, you say their name a lot more, like in text, in the phone, when you're talking to people. And then as the relationship goes longer, you stop and it just starts becoming other things to refer to them besides their name. So, it's like, it's a, like a negative correlation. I totally see that. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, totally. Gotcha. Interesting. But yeah, so I guess this is our moment of seeing, okay, this is where Shohei's future on the show lies. Let's see if he'll reach anything Ooh. with that. Haruka, 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 Haruka. Haruka. Which, I mean, this is a good Haruka. time, right? Because Haruka is fighting for Kenny. And in my opinion, I don't think she's that's a battle she's going to win. Kenny seems to be no. liking. No, not after this I episode. think Kenny's liking uh, Risa a lot more, just in general. Mm, I wonder. It's getting Let's spicy. See. It's getting saucy. Uh, but we cut to the first floor and it's Ruka and Kaori and Kaori sitting at the dining table drawing to which Ruka says, you're drawing. And she's like, yes, I am. Yeah, I'm drawing how to get score back. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really uncomfortable. I was like, that's not a great way to start a conversation. He just to like, like <laughs> point out what they're doing. <laughs> he was hovering in the strangest way. Yeah. Mm. But nonetheless, she's drawing a Haruka's Corvette. She said it was her first time drawing up cars, which is, that's cool. You know, we get to see her grow as an artist, right? Mm-hmm. Um, to which Haruka gets home and is just like, oh my God, this looks just like my car. I love it. It's cool. It's nice. if, the owner, if the owner says so, then I guess so. Yeah. There you go. Um, also, did anyone else get, like, because Haruka did her makeup up differently here. Maybe she came yeah. home from, like, a, a gig or something. She got bangs. Yeah. Anyone, she got bangs. bangs. Anyone Bye. think she kind of looked a little bit like Sena? Yes. I yes. never thought that. I felt that. Yeah. I never got that. Never occurred to me. Oh, interesting. Interesting. All right. Sorry to throw it out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then at this point, uh, Ruka and Kaori actually solidify their plans because now Ruka has his, his work schedule for the next few weeks. And you know, they're like, oh, can you go on this day? Should we go to this place? But they've got it all down and they're going to a place called Sekaido to get arts. To get art. To do an art. Art. <laughs> art tools. <laughs> to do a. a Art supply picking date. Yep. Are they gonna get food too? Is that on the table? They better get food. Probably. This better not be like running errands. Well, we'll have to see. Yeah. Uh, we cut to the panel, and they all actually applaud Ruka because he changed so quickly. He did a one eighty. <laughs> yeah. <I don't>... 
<laughs> bust through his shell. Yeah, we'll we'll see about that though. I mean, it was because somebody actually lit a fire under his ass. Yeah, mm. I mean, but the, I think that if I remember right, the panelists did make a prediction that the youngest one might be the one to change the most because he's the yeah. one least set mm. in his ways. That's why he's yeah. there. Mm. That's why Makes he's sense. there. Makes sense for me. You know, he's yeah. here for these experiences. Smart. So I think, I mean, if anything, our boy Ruka is learning. He's learning. Good for him. So we're at the scene. The scene where Haruka and Risako almost murder each other, I swear. So oh it starts God. off with Haruka making a stew for uh, for Kenny. I mean, it's not explicitly for Kenny, but holy, it's for, for Kenny. Kenny, right? It looks really good. That same looks good. Nom, nom. Yeah. Um, Risako gets home. Kenny gets home. They eat the food. And you can clearly tell Haruka's looking for Kenny's approval. Like, did I do good? Is the soup good? Did you like the soup? Is the soup right. delicious? Yeah. Um, and and then it's just the three of them having a conversation, which Kenny opens up with. So I heard you think the boys are passive. <laughs> and he doesn't really apologize for it or say no. he vows to change about it. But he does say, I'm more free next month in June. So let's hang out in that. Well. Well, also, he said he kind of dropped the hammer here. Where he's like, I didn't. The reason why I'm not asking anyone out because I don't want anyone to think I like them. I mean, he said it pretty plain there. Yeah, I don't want yeah. to lead anyone on. And I was like, why is no one reacting to that more? Yeah. And then no there one... was a non reaction there. And then he said, and then they defend or they retort, I should say, and say, it doesn't have to be a date, just casual stuff. Just like, just asks out to do things. And then that's when he said, well, next month I'm free. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And he's basically mm -hmm. saying, well, I'll do stuff as long as y'all don't think that Kenny from Spicy Soul would ever date you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want to put it into those terms, okay, then. I'm just, I'm just getting annoyed by him, that's all. But then Haruka's very straightforward back to him and says... Yeah, but also I don't know really ever what to say around you or with you or to you. I, I get very nervous around you. And I, yeah. you, we, we've gotten hints of that, right? Like on their many dates where Kenny just seems like a hard person to talk to if you don't have something to latch onto to talk with him about. This is the spark here when she said that, when she took the conversation here. This is the spark that lit the fuse to the stick of dynamite that explodes very shortly here. But I'm just curious when she did bring that up, like what was she hoping to get given present company at the table like what was why did she bring that up then and there it just seemed like strange timing maybe she was maybe i'm just again i'm not i haven't thought about this until just now but maybe she was trying to get him to say some so, uh, to like kind of like show risico that he's interested in her too i don't know mm. i'm just wondering what what where the conversation where, was going. yeah where the, about what the goal was <clears throat> yeah because it goes a very bad place and risico takes it there yep well, if I had to guess with Haruka, I think part of the reason she said that is to maybe find a better understanding. Because, like, if you want to be friends with someone, but you can tell, like, there's there's something going on in the gears of the friendship that just it, the gears aren't cranking. You want to identify what it is. To me, it makes total sense to say that in in private. Yes. But to do it in front of Risiko at the table, that's that's what I'm wondering what was her motivation behind that and it was like maybe to kind of pay, pay her back like see he likes me too doesn't yeah that. was that to like right. is, is she trying to that. one up Risako here I wonder but yeah. it blows up man let's get it there. does because Risako is Explosions. like you activated my trap card and she flips over the Yu-Gi-Oh card because they're all playing Yu-Gi-Oh on the table and she says oh that's because you like him right Haruka don't you get nervous around oh, the yeah. people that you yeah. like? And then Kenny Fuck. goes <gasps> no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> it would have been funny if he did didn't it yeah, oh, we that would all be great. went. <gasps> Dude, because wouldn't it be wouldn't it be funny what? if, if uh, Kenny goes <gasps> and then you just hear in the background? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it, this uh, this you was hear like in the living room. God, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> this was such like an obvious attack on Haruka too, because it's not like one of those things where like, okay, it's your friend and you're there with your friend who is just trying to embarrass you, right? You know, that like right. they don't have they don't have any interest in, in, in Kenny. You know, they just they're just trying to embarrass you. They're just there because you're they're your idiot friend. No, she's actively trying to make Haruka look worse. They don't have a rapport yeah. like that. Right. No. That's why it was like 
I almost feel like this was premeditated in a sense One because it's percent. like she she was like, okay, I put it out there a couple days ago that I'm comfortable with just like saying shit like that. So guess what? I'm oh. going to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, she laid the trap. It's like, I warned you this would happen. I, I told you she oh. played the trap card earlier. I wasn't kidding. When that's I, when I said brutal trap if that's the case. I mean, definitely, like I said, Risako's mean streak comes out here. Mm. Yeah, because did not see it like hitting as hard as it did but dang yeah yeah it was first, it was not written off right because at first Hanako tries to uh disarm the situation she's kind of like what i don't know just stop it like whatever right but then risiko doubles down and this is one of those like i hear the words you're saying i know you mean something else moments because risiko apologizes and says i shouldn't have said that in front of you i just think that that's what that means not that i know isn't that the case though I'll stop talking about it. Uh, it's like, yeah, like ugh. you fucking know that Haruka likes him. Everyone at the table yeah, kind of do. does, but yeah, you can't yeah, just throw that shit out there and then like take it back. It's already done, done. Yeah, you you, yeah. Did, you did the damage, and it was a completely dishonest apology too. Like, yeah, her hands are not clean of sin. No, here. no, no. no. Yeah. You, I mean, you you planned all of it anyway. Like you, you and it exactly was such a non apology too from Risiko. Well, of it was course, very it was. much non apology. I think yeah. that was probably part of the plan. It, <laughs> yeah, it was like kind of painful, like because you know, then Kenny leaves, and then um, he's like, "I got to go to the bathroom," there. and then he never comes yeah. back. By the way. Because we don't see no. him again. He's, he's already same, in the boys' room. Same, Kenny. Yeah. Same, Kenny. Yeah. He's really. like, I'm going to blast but, on like, out of here. Um, This is really uncomfortable. And then the scene just the keeps going. That, the scene keeps going. Yeah, the fa- that's the thing. The fact that they're both sitting there, like, on their phones. And Haruka's obviously trying to keep her cool. And Risiko's like, uh, go men. Yeah. And then when Haruka leaves, like, she's just, like, on my phone. Mm. Not a second thought. Yeah, and here's the thing, right? With the way Risiko says go men, right? Like, she even says, oh, man, now I feel awkward. <laughs> Isn't this such an awkward situation for you, Haruka? <laughs> it's like, man, fuck you. Like, that's yeah. so mean. And the fact that you're laughing totally at her, like, this is not a, oh, man, this is a funny situation. I'm going to laugh into the cosmos laugh. Like, this is a, I know I've caused you pain. And I'm going to revel in it with my laugh. Yeah, yeah. But- Hanukkah's, and Hanukkah's just like, you You know that I like him, right? Why would you say that? I would never blare out your feelings out there like that in public. Yeah. Like, it's just like treat people the way you want to be treated. Oh, it was completely you disrespectful. Know? And if mm-hmm. anything, what she just did there is she cemented. I, I mean, that that was absurdly unattractive to to Kenny. That wasn't winning her any sort of points with Kenny at all. That, that winning Risa it's going gonna, it's gonna to give yeah it's going to give Risiko the exact opposite of the reaction she was hoping to get yeah it was awkward for him he's like I don't even know what this conversation is right now peace yeah and um, I mean, would you be too like if you were Kenny in that situation I'd be like I'm fucking out of here <laughs> yeah for because because he realizes he, he, now he's not involved in a conversation with the two girls he's a, a bystander witnessing two girls fighting over petty shit yep yeah. yeah. So he, he sees the drama. He said, brewing. "I don't understand what we're talking about right now." Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Go to the bathroom. Like, bye. This is one of those like he totally understands what's going on, but he also realizes this is not his conversation. It's not about him, really. It's no. about these two girls. Which again, yeah. it's like they're. It's that's what I brought up earlier in the episode, right? It was like, how much is this really about Kenny? This is more about the girls winning over each other mm, in a right. way. It's like a rivalry, and he's just kind of there to be the object, you know, to orbit around. So. The thing about it is Haruka, you know, is stewing there and she is getting emotional and I'm getting kind of mad on her behalf, too, because I'm a similar. Right. I don't sit there and just blurt out stuff like that, especially if I do have a big crush on somebody. It's much more. It's an unspoken thing. You know, it's I'm, I'm not just I'm not like Risiko when it comes to that. So if someone did that to me, my blood would be boiling, too, I think. And I would take it more as like a personal attack and almost like a sabotage act. Right. Mm. And so she sits mm. there. She's stewing. You can see her looking around. The music starts getting way more tense. <clears throat> and then Haruka just compounds the issue by making an extreme, in my opinion, an extremely, extremely emotional decision and gets up and goes, do you mind if I go talk to Kenny? Because he probably thinks I like him now. And I don't know why she even asked Risiko for permission. But yeah, she says, yeah go ahead. Whatever. Well, eventually, she just says, I'm I'm going to. She states that I'm going to go talk to him. I'm going to go talk to him. Yeah. Go. Why? Don't. Just leave it alone. Let it blow over. Like, don't even 
don't address this with Kenny. She goes into his room mm. and starts crying. Oh my God. And Kenny's if just, I was Kenny, Kenny's I was like, just what sitting the there like wide eyed, like, what the <laughs> he, fuck? He literally just took off his socks, balled him up in a ball. <laughs> just like, okay, what are we doing? It was just like, Hanukkah, no, no, don't do that. Don't do what you're going to do. No, 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 no. She should have taken a breather and let it let it sit for a minute, calm the fuck over. down. If, even if she wanted to talk to him, she should have waited. She should have totally. waited. Don't go in there and cry. No. I don't I don't know what the intention was. Was she gonna be like, hey, I don't like you? <laughs> yeah, I'm just crying. I don't like you. I just it's don't want like to like, no. like you. So, uh, so I don't care if you ask me out. I, I think the prediction is gonna go. I mean, obviously she's crying. I think my prediction is like it's gonna be like, yes, I at least I hope it goes this way. Yes, I like you, but I wasn't hoping you would find out this way. And mm. yeah, that that's where I'm right. Yeah. I that's what I hope I mean that's right. the elegant way to do it, but like I said, she I think she's just the timing here. You know, I think it's just she's going to dig some kind of hole. I mean, I can't wait to see where it goes, but it's going to be like there's going to be bloodshed I think between the girls. I don't know. There might even be like a house talk about this. Yeah. And oh yeah. This is our an next, incident. Our next our next episode is called Girl Fight. Yeah. yeah that's it's, it's going to get bloody. So here's the here's the thing. So people in our community keep telling us like you know, watch out for episode 11. Obviously, we haven't seen it. I don't know anything about it, but it's like, okay, so you're telling me this isn't it. This next episode isn't going to be like the what, next, what number we're on. That's a while away. Yeah, that's going to say the it's next like, episode's nine because the next episode's nine and people are telling don't us fight. You think, yeah, by the title, you think it's going to be. That's juicy. what I'm saying. It's like, isn't this the T? You know what I'm saying? Like everything that so, everyone's been talking about, but I guess not. So I want to I want to ask two kind of wrap up questions here as now that we're like, looking over the episode as a whole one do you guys think this was something that risiko done out of pure malice or perhaps is she a sociopath because the quote i want to analyze here is she like after haruka says like hey i didn't like that you did that risiko responds oh you didn't want me to say that i don't understand other people's emotions uh i think that was an excuse i don't know i can't say sociopath yet i think it was just malice i think it was petty i think yeah. it was malicious petty. i think petty she just, is a good word yeah, yeah she I, doesn't like she doesn't like how haruka has i mean this has been brewing for eight episodes now she doesn't like how haruka is jumping from wherever um risiko's interests are so right. she's like this is a way to get her back this is like a gut punch like well all right you want to keep jumping you like him now you like him now oh well i'm gonna embarrass you in front of him right now mm. yeah that on honestly i think jack pretty much summed it up yeah i think it was definitely like to get a one up on on Haruka and win this quote unquote competition. And as we were saying earlier, this isn't really about Kenny anymore, at least not to Risako, right? Yeah, um, I, yeah. In order to get the um, sociopath tag, I need to see like a storied history. I need to see like a pattern, right? Because otherwise, if Risako keeps doing this over and over again, yeah, then I'm ready. To I mean, I think otherwise, Risako has been great. You know, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I yeah. really like her, and that's, that's what's disappointing about this part is seeing right. her act like this because mm. I do like her a yeah. lot. But yeah, the whole thing is just we'll have to see, like, is there a recovery from this? Right. Mm, right. Are they going to be friends by the end? Man, I kind of just want to go watch the episode now. <laughs> just to I mean, Let's I really, go. Let's it's, go. It's quite the cliffhanger. And yeah. Terrace House is great at this shit. Right. But the other question I did want to leave you with is where do you think? Because we, we've kind of touched on before that Shohei and Cody are kind of like the the sponges of of juicy deets in the house and or the mediators of the house in a way you know because they're the ones that everyone comes to with mm -hmm. th these kind of things their woes yes where do you think they would stand on this situation here because this is something that's happened completely externally from shohei and Cody. neither of them were there they will both be hearing about this from secondhand third-hand sources <laughs> <laughs> I don't. How, how do you I think, think they'll analyze that, it? I think that Cowrie would prefer not to be involved whatsoever. Absolutely. But I think that Haruka is going to directly talk to her about that, and Definitely. you know she's she's going to comfort her. She's going to be like, oh, she, you know, obviously she shouldn't have said that. Obviously that wasn't that wasn't good. I don't think that she's going to be like Risiko. We got beef now, but that's a I bad way to go. It's a it's a possibility, yeah. but it hopefully doesn't get there. Yeah, I I think it's gonna be more like it's just gonna get hella awkward, hella fast. Mm. Yeah, I one hundred percent agree. I honestly, daily, yeah, you pretty much summed up my thoughts. I think that's how Kaori is definitely gonna react. I think from Shohei's perspective, um, 
I, I mean, I'm just curious to hear Kenny's take on all of it. Um, which is, I'm sure, is how Kenny is or Shohei is probably going to hear about it. But I, I, I just want to hear what Kenny has to say behind closed doors. Like, what I mean, you know, yeah, the next scene has to be them in that room. It has oh, yeah. to be that. If it's not that, then I'm booing the show. It has to be that. Mm-hmm. So yep, for sure. we'll see. Yep. But so what, let's, yeah, yep. like, what is she going to say? I just don't want you to think I like you. <laughs> He's like, fine, I don't like you either. <laughs> like, that's how, is that how it's going to go? Don't worry. Don't, don't worry. worry. I yeah. don't. So remember, I'm not asking you out, girl. <laughs> He's going to say, like, I was hoping you wouldn't find out in this way. And then he's going to give her some sort of sage advice, right? Or something, right? And then they may end up like hang because they there there could be the possibility that they become closer because of it there's a chance mm-hmm. not, uh, definitely not and Risa go, yeah that Risa, this plan might backfire in Risa's face definitely yeah he might say here you know i really think you're beautiful i've said so much to the other guys she'll be like really i was starting to wonder i don't know if i, I don't I think it'll go that lure. far i don't think it'll go that far we'll see but yeah we'll find I, out i say let's find I out right see. now let's find out right now because yeah, yeah. yeah. We've been we've been sitting on this episode for a while. Yes. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, any theories about our analysis here of this episode, please feel free to reach out to us and email those things at questions at terracehousepodcast.com. You can catch us next Tuesday where we finally unfold whatever the hell is gonna happen in Girl Fight. The Get next it. episode. Get it. Get it. Get it. I got one other thing to say. The Discord is picking up steam. Thank you to everyone that has joined recently. Uh, and uh, again, if you're not on Discord, get there because that's probably where we have the most engagement. Yeah, and honestly, so we did. Um, I don't. Did we mention it on the show already? But we did meet a couple of our of the people in our community, um, and it was really cool to get to talk to them. And also, um, the on Discord. Yeah, on Discord. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. And and the Discord is actually a really good way to get in and more direct contact with us and give us feedback about the show. Um, because it it's been invaluable hearing from the people in the Discord and, and what they think of the show, what they think is going on in the world of Terrace House too. It really helps us yeah. get an idea of the direction that we should direct uh our episodes or if there's any talking points that we need to bring up. So and just gentle reminder to everyone out there, we only have one rule on the Discord. Be excellent to each other. Be nice. Be kind. Let's talk about our show. Let's talk about Terrace House. Let's have a great time. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we also do impromptu Q&As when we're feeling froggy. So, I mean, if you're feeling, if you, if you want to get in touch with us just directly out of nowhere, and we're just like, hey, guys, we're here. You want to talk? Join the voice chat. Feel free. Because we've done it once. So, shout out to Rosie for that. Shout out to Jonathan for that. Shout out to Conch Bubby. Thank you for speaking with us. Ribbit, ribbit. Um, Yep, just like frogs. Uh, but that should bring us to a close here. This has been Hadaima. Thanks for listening. Itekimas. Follow us on Instagram at Tadimagram, on Twitter at Tadimapod, and check out our YouTube channel, Facebook group, and brand new Discord server, all linked in the show notes.